Here, you can exercise your rights to freedom every day without leaving your home. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stay in City way. Good afternoon and welcome to Real Talk with me, Anne Lem Doda. Not many in this cutthroat entertainment industry can say that they've had a career that spans over 40 years and still managed to be a personality before being a celebrity. My guest started out in the broadcasting industry way back in the early 1970s before the cameras ever zoomed in on his striking majestic Zulu swag. It was his voice that captured the hearts of many radio listeners. Okay, obviously it sounds better than that. From the original School of Cool at Metro of him to TV presenting movies, TV roles in The Gods Must Be Crazy, Stoney, the one and only Shaka Zulu, Nomzamo, Jacob's Cross, 90 Plain Streets, Generations, The Queen, and many more. America may have James Old Jones, but South Africa, we're blessed to have the incomparable voice and talent that is the legend's legend himself, Baba Treasure Shawalala. <laughs> Oh my word. Wow. You know, my mom, mm. when she was living, used to say, you, that is a tall glass of water, that treasure. <laughs> <laughs> like, and we'd be like, mom, relax. She's like, uh-uh, tall, dark, and some ticks all the boxes, son. Ticks all. Like, did you know this, that our mothers were Denzel Washington in you? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I had a bit of an idea, but uh, I never re really wanted to put myself up there, you know. Uh -uh. I knew that some ladies, ladies of my age, were really, really going crazy over me. You know, she used to say she bets your voicemail, like, <laughs> like she just wants your number. She doesn't want to talk to you. She wants to get through to your voicemail. So right. Like, hi, this is a treasure. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> just to have a peaceful night, eh? Do you get that when people <laughs> just say, just talk, just talk, talk? Yeah, I've heard uh, ladies uh, particularly. I've heard ladies saying to me, hey, just keep on talking. Whatever you say, just keep on talking. I'm listening all the way, and I'm ready to listen to you for hours on end. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was also listening. <laughs> just like, was your voice always like this, like a standard six with a metric voice talking to you, and they're like, hey, treasure, like, yes. They're like, oh, sorry, dog, we didn't yeah. realize. <laughs> I had a distinctive voice, but it wasn't this trick right, until I started smoking and doing all sorts of things on the side. Yeah. yeah. But then it started maturing in its own way, and it took its own turn. Uh, so, and radio is your first love? Radio is my first love, yes. Explain to me how, you know, because, you know, love start like that. There's a spark. There's like, <laughs> you see each other. You're like, hey, I see you. Hey, you see me. Right. You know, let's talk. When was that first meeting for you and radio? It was uh, quite coincidental, actually, for me to get into radio. Yeah. It wasn't something planned or anything like that. Because I was a technical man, you know. I used to fix up machines like uh, office machines yeah. and stuff like that, right up to cash registers. Yeah. So I happened to have a, an area which had a radio station in it. Mm. Yeah way back in the 70s. So I was servicing my area, sent by the technical company. And as I was doing, uh, as I went into this company, it was a radio station. I didn't even know what a radio station meant, you know? Yeah. And I got in there, said, look guys, I've come here to actually service a machine. Did you put in a call for someone to come and help you? And the lady went, huh? <laughs> wow, what's your name? And she wanted all the details and what have you and called the program's director. And they immediately gave me an audition. And, how, and then you got the job. And then I got the job. So this is not at Metro FM. No, no, no. Wait, what Way radio station is this? Metro Can you even FM. remember? It was Radio SR, which stood for Swazi Radio. Okay. Yeah, way back. In the days of uh, LM Radio, mm. Swazi Music Radio. Radio. Yeah, yeah. In those days, yeah. Uh, so. Okay, so there's, there's, a, there's a certain level of personality that's needed mm. to engage on radio because. Yeah. People can't see us, right? right. So it's a theater of mind. You, you, you're telling right. a story. Right. Were you always a natural storyteller or like a, na a natural painter with your words, which then you know uh, afforded you the success? Or did you have to learn there? Like basically, we throw you in a pool and you learn how to swim as I throw you in. No, fortunately, I had my high schooling in Swaziland. So uh, ah. we're taught by expatriates and stuff like that. So 
I could easily maneuver the language and, and uh, play around with it. Uh. Yeah, so I didn't have much to do really to try and catch up. And I, I, I wasn't a shy person, so I could actually <laughs> talk to people and do whatever. Yeah. I was into arts even at school, so it was easy for me to just to glide into it. So doesn't mm. it become an issue for the... Because radio is very competitive. Eh? Yeah, very. Very competitive. Very, yeah. I mean, like, the rivalry alone between breakfast and drive, like, it's a, it's a, it's a book for every station to write. Right. But what I also notice about radio is as soon as a new person walks in the door, yeah. you know, everyone, like, there's a... It's an earthquake, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So now yeah. here's this guy. Yeah. He's tall. He knows mm. how to fix things. And he knows how to be on radio. Are you not a threat to the existing lineup on Swazi Radio? Uh, fortunately, really, I wasn't because there was space. You know, they had space for ah, me to. Ah, so you didn't kick it. anyone off. Yeah, and I, I started off as a freelancer, kind of. So I, I didn't, you know, as a temporary person. Ah. So I was still doing my technical thing. And then when I get time, I just go in there and uh, sort of pre package my show. Mm. Mm. So the only way I can bring an, uh, like a, an equivalent to what I'm about to talk about is say, the, you know the Jamaican relay team, they're called the dream team because oh, all right. of them run 100 meters under 10 seconds, right? Okay, so obviously right. they're always going to mm -hmm. win it. Right. So your lineup at Metro of M, you guys yeah. were the Jamaican relay team. You guys were like the dream team. That's right. And I happened to run into a few of them and a few of them may have a bit of messages for you. Let's roll it. <laughs> Way back 1978, the first commercial radio station, Radio SR. Remember those days when Bunny Coin introduced you to Radio SR? VK actually took you to Bunny Coin and said he is a man with a big voice, nice voice. And then Bunny Coin took you all the way to Radio SR. That's where we met and that's how me and you became friends because we were close. And then for me to be where I am today because of you. Hey, Mjueza, you know, the only thing I want to, and I'm, I'm glad I've got this opportunity because if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have found my voice in radio. I wouldn't have even thought of radio as a, a, you know, the kind of work I would have done. And, and thanks to you, my brother, and all the beautiful times we've shared together. I love you. This is a message to my friend, Trezor Shabalala, and uh, thanks very much in Kalagata for the great times we spent together many years ago when I came to Johannesburg. Now, this is a man who introduced me to Joburg, showed me my way around the city introduced me to a lot of interesting people. We lived together, same building, as friends, as brothers, and had lots of fun together. <laughs> I like the way Tim is like, lots of fun together. Okay, so oh, if that. you were, you know, the one who introduced him to Joburg, the one who showed him around, the That's one who right. made him feel comfortable, <laughs> you know, who was your treasure to Tim? Like, who introduced you to Joburg? Who from introduced Clubland? me yeah. to Joburg? Well, fortunately, I, fr I was from Soweto, unlike Tim and them, who yeah. were from Northwest and stuff like that. I was born and bred in Soweto, so I'm typical stuff here. Okay. So I could find my way around, you know. You know uh. Like, uh, that's how, in fact, when we were together with Tim, yeah. we're staying in Hillbro then. So I moved from the township into Hillbro, got myself an apartment. Uh. That's where we stayed together with Tim there, and we had lots of fun, you know. So, but I actually literally took myself from the township yeah. to town and settled in Hillbro. And know. did you ever feel like you were celebrities? Like, did you ever feel like, you know, you're walking down Hillbro and people are like, ah, Tim, Trevor, and you guys, because you know, like in the movies when somebody's walking down the street and right. they can hear music all the time, was that your life? Not really. No, what was your we life? We were very cool, you know, we're just regular guys going around just like other people and uh, moving around yeah. Hillbro and doing their thing. But y we, know, we knew we had something special, yeah. something good. And we used to have sessions, you know, where we would sit around playing music from after knocking off at work, we'd just play music all the time. At times, I even after work, we'd play music throughout the night, sleep at two, three in the morning. You know? sure. yeah. But we're simple folk. You know, you know. And I'm glad you touched on that because uh, most radio legends will tell you to be relevant in radio, you have to be simple, regular folk. We'll chat about that uh, after the break. Voices and talent combined, the Metro 8 team had all the legends. I want you to uh, obviously listen, we listened to something and we played you the voice notes. After the break, we want to talk about being regular, listening to music, getting to know each other and the political space that he found himself in when he was on air. Do you speak politics or do you just keep it light and fluffy? We'll talk about that after the break.
Welcome back to Real Talk. It was the Roman politician and general Mark Anthony who said, if you do what you love, you'll never have to work a day in your life. Bob Treasure Shabalala is without a doubt a living example of this philosophy. And today, the stage right here at ACBC3 is his. You know, to show you've got such manners, you even clap for yourself. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, the audience is clapping, but it's like, ah, now, now I'm going to clap for myself. <laughs> so, I mean, the 1970s, right, you've got people like Maria Makeda and Yuma Sikela and right. Kefa Semenya yeah. using their music uh, to, to be political. That's you've right. got people like Gibson Kente, you know, writing plays, right. you know, right. to show their political affiliations. You are on radio. How, how do you approach it? Are you... Are you there using your voice, using the platform, you know, to fight the struggle? Bearing in mind that just relieving our pain can also be fighting the struggle. Definitely. What's yeah. your take as treasure? Yo, yeah. what I used to do, I used to talk about politics, not necessarily in the foreground there, you know, or maybe on air for that matter, uh. but with my peers would sort of like have, uh, what, do they, what do they call it now? post-mortem sessions, you know, mm. where something topical comes out on air and we're talking politics or everybody's talking politics. And then late in the night, we'll sit back and be like, I'm chair critics, you know, mm. and just summarize everything that was being said and, you know, talk to ourselves. What would you do if mm. you were trapped up in a position like, say, Mr. X? You know, mm. Yeah, and then just like that. And, you know, Mom Dorothy Masuko once said something, she said, we get that it was apartheid, and we get that it was painful, but whilst we were in, the, we were not sad the entire time, you That's know. Right, yeah. we, we were living, we were going to jazz clubs, we were out there hanging out with the politicians that you knew. We were absolutely living. Yeah. Can you attest to this, that you guys were, yeah, you were living? Yeah, that was the thing, you know. Like you were talking about Shakespeare, he says, they also serve who only stand and wait. Oh. You understand what I mean? So, we were there in the background going to clubs and making people happy and giving them hope uh. that the future is coming. Uh. Something better is coming than the situation that is happening now. But before that, situ that something better comes, uh. we have to keep you like going, uh. going, knowing that fu the future is here and there's still another tomorrow. And you personally, did you believe that the future was coming and it was better? Yes, I did believe that because I'm a very how can I put it, spiritual person. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah. so, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, so I used to know what was going to happen, you know, long before it happened, yeah. So, I mean, radio 1970s, in mm -hmm. the 80s, mm -hmm. and then in the 90s, and mm -hmm. in the 2000s, and now we're well into 2017. Right, I mean, right. 2017 is pretty much done. 2018 is like, here. yeah. So that's 40 years of you broadcasting. That's right. Like, what's the thread that's kept you behind the microphone? You're doing something, yeah. and it's your secret when I pay. Right. It's funny, yes. Yeah. My secret was always remaining humble at all times. I'm never bigger than the situation. Mm. I always make sure that the situation is bigger than me, or mm. the circumstances were bigger than me. And then I come in there and, you know, literally beg my way in, my way in there. Mm. How best can I solve this? Is it possible? Can I do it? Or do I need a, do I need to go for more backup uh. to actually attack it? Yeah, you see, that's how. Uh, and uh, I never became bigger than myself. You know, I always mm. tried to to wait until I'm lifted up to that level. You see, is it because you were originally a technical guy that used to fix things? Mm -hmm that you found it easy to move with the technologies that radio and TV presented? Because let's be honest, you yes, know, yes. in 1970, <laughs> y'all, you were re you were rewinding a song with a pen. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, like this, with right, a cassette, yeah, you know? Yeah. Mm. And, and, and then systems come in and you know, yeah. you, you, can, you can be scared of that and be like, no, you right. know, this is right. not for me, I'm leaving, let me go do something where my, <laughs> where my age sakes are. But you, you stayed in there, you're like, no. Okay, I'm going to learn about this. Is it because you, of your technical side where you were always comfortable to, say, move with the times? That's right. I think it's, it's because I was very techni technically inclined. You yeah. see? I was a very practical person. I could use my hands to do little things here and there. Look, even woodwork and what have you, I was, I was a pro at that. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So uh, it was easy for me to adapt mm. to the demands of technology, you know. And at that time, again, I was still fascinated by radio because I I just listened to radio like, you know, any ordinary person. Yeah. But now, here was I now, in the depth of things, 
where I actually had to present something on radio. So mm. I had to be resourceful. I had to know what to say at mm. whatever moment. Or even if I'm caught by surprise, I had to have something to say because there were rules involved there. You, had, you, you couldn't have dead air. Yeah. That was a crime, yeah. you understand? And at the same time, <laughs> you couldn't swear on air. You couldn't, there was little language policy that yeah. you needed to, and you couldn't mix things up, you know? It's uh, either you're speaking English oh, really? or Zulu oh. or whatever. You couldn't juggle around and do everything, you see? Mm. Were you ever almost fired? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll fired take that as a tub. yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, fired is, is, is asking for too much. But uh, I nearly got into trouble what did you for do? sleeping on air. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the music came to an end, and uh, I, was, I was fast asleep. Because, you know, being new in the thing and being young, you know, we would sometimes overdo these things. And uh, you find yourself having slept very little. Mm. And being. Slept very little yeah, and drank very much. Very much. Oh. And, yeah, <laughs> so the next day you'd have problems of. Uh, drowsiness and everything. Yeah. So, but it was very innocent. Not that I was drunk on air. You know, no, yeah, obviously, yeah, but I, was, I mean, it's that fatigue, tired, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, like know like weekends and weekends yeah. of piling it That's up, right. you, you're going to be tired. And gee, I mean, the Eastern Cape, when it came to partying and whatever, it was... Hasn't I'm, changed. I'm, Those oh, are my people. Gee. You party in Oh. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was vibrant <laughs> when I left here going down there, but when I got there, Jesus, I, I, I just couldn't <laughs> believe this. Yeah. Do you... It, was there ever a time when you felt you were you were looked over and not given a slot that you thought you deserved? Uh, not ever, no, no, no. Really? Yo. You must be the only radio DJ who feels that. Because <laughs> even, even I'm harboring feelings of resentment Yo. for being looked over once. No, I never really did because in my time, you know, I was one of the things. You see. Oh. Awesome. Oh. So wherever I went or was sent, it's actually where I wanted to be, you see. Okay. Uh, but I never even voiced out, oh, yeah, it's exactly what I wanted. No. Uh. I'll just let it flow. Like, oh, I'm fortunate. I'm lucky. You know, but Has your style of broadcasting changed? Not really, no, no. It hasn't. So, you don't, because, I mean, as the years went on, so initially mm. it was all about, you know, mm. radio is yeah, yeah. the voice. Right. Right? Right. Um, and then it, it became the voice and personality. Yeah. Now I, I find everywhere, even even what we call format right. radio shows, where really it's supposed to be background, yeah. just play music, right. give away some money, yeah. give the time, give right. the temperature. Right. You know, even that is is like forcing personalities. So That's did you not right. find that? Because I mean, also now we're fighting so many things. You're fighting the internet, you're fighting TV. Oh. You know, you're fighting people's phones. Mm. So did you never? Did you not like find that? Oh, I need to like, I need to add aromat. I never really had to battle because I always found myself doing more than one thing. So I would multitask quite a lot, you see? Uh, so my style remained the same because I, I've never been a one job person, you know? I've mm. always had something on the side, something else there, always something going, you know? So I was always trapped in between a lot of things that I was doing. So you would never time. feel like you're getting stale no. at one thing because you're. Your different creative That's streams it, yeah. That's like it. kept it going. Mm. Hmm. Well, there's a lesson in there. Listen, I'll be reading some of your tweets after this. Keep them coming. And of course, the voice notes, the numbers are on the screen. We are in studio with the legend himself. We called him the legend's legend. Go ask your legend who his legend is. He'll tell you that it's my treasure, Shabalala. We're coming back with him after this. on an island that he will be forgotten. The harder they try to silence him, the louder I become. Amanda! 
and welcome back to Real Talk. Today with me in studio is Mab Treasure Shabalala, who was in the Winnie Mandela biopic that you've just seen a clip of. And just like Mam Winnie, as you can all see, the golden years are treating him very, very well. So, I mean, when this movie was, was first cast and announced that it's going to happen in South Africa, naturally there was a lot of, why can't we get our own playing, you know, our That's roles? Right, right. And it's, it's a continuous debate that happens every single time. Right. So now you are stuck right in the middle of this highway. Because, A, you are of, you know, uh, South African broadcasting royalty. Right. Uh, so your, your voice weighs a lot, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you've been cast in an international movie, right? And mm -hmm. th there's, there's a celebration to be done. Right. So how do you approach that? Yeah, it was tough. But at least at, at that moment, when, when this happened, actually, when I got a part... In fact, it was in the movie, uh, The Long Walk to Freedom. Mm. Uh, I was already deeply entrenched in the movie business, you see, mm. at that stage. So it, it was like a shock for me to get a part in that movie mm. because I knew that I had paid my respects. Mm. You know, I, I, I had paid my dues, so to say, mm. you know, to be able to be casted for that as one of, one of the leading artists yeah. or performers in the country. You see. But, you know, the debate is... Mm -hmm. Um, sh are we boycotting this movie because they're not the leads mm -hmm. and are not South African? Mm -hmm. y yes, we can cast you can you can cast everyone else as South African, but oh, oh. if the leads are not South African, then what does it mean for us? You know, are you joining that debate? Are you backing it whilst you're inside the movie? Well, the debate was actually put aside. It was outcasted in the sense that we were given a, a political reason mm. why those foreign actors had to be there. Mm. So politically, it was the country that pays the money has the right to choose the lead. You see what I mean? That's how we understood it. Mm. So that's why maybe we never took to the streets and uh, uh, sort mm. of boycotted the movie or did whatever. Mm. It was still so it, we were going to get something out of it, a lesson of some sort yeah. in the craft itself, you see. But politically, it was a different story. Yeah. Okay, I we understood that. Totally hear it. In fact, mm. that was my standing as well. Because mm. I was like, guys, mm. if, if we want to cast our own actors, yeah. we mm -hmm. must make the movies. We must pay. We must pay. Mm. And right. so it, I, I felt like the anger was misdirected mm. at, at Terrence Howard and That's Jennifer right. Hudson. It, we yeah. turn the anger and look at our own arts department, our That's own arts right. and culture yeah. department yeah. and say, why aren't you telling paying these stories? The why aren't you paying mm. for these things? Mm. So, I, But at the same time, you know, you learn to be objective and you hear the other side. Could you hear the other side? Were you yeah. understanding where they yeah, were coming yeah. from? Yeah, because they would claim that, look, we paid the money, first of all, mm. and these guys that we're presenting have made a name for themselves globally, yeah. not just here in South Africa. And the, the movie needs viewers. It, it needs need to viewers have pool. internationally. Oh. It must make box office. You see what I mean? How did you get into acting? <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, with the influence that I had from, that I'd gathered from radio. Yeah. Uh, I was like well known now. People could attach, you know, the voice to the face. Uh -huh. you see what I mean? And they thought, he doesn't look too bad. He's so, tall. You know, he's tall. Uh -huh. He's exactly what we need. You know, then they would use me in their movies and stuff like that. So in 1986, I found myself starring in my very first movie. Which was? Stoney, the one and only. Uh, okay. Did you mean. go for an audition? Uh, no, in fact, I was typecasted. <laughs> <laughs> what, told Doc and Anson? Like <laughs> yeah, and, and the, the director, a producer, felt, oh, well, I could do something. I actually went to the gym, lifted up a bit to tone up and become a big, big, you know? And, uh, yeah, to do, I went for uh, professional boxing. Uh, 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 I had boxing trainers who actually came and, and, and trained me, you know? So have you ever gone for an audition? Yes, I have gone for auditions like everybody else. I have lost some auditions. Which I'm role did you lose? <laughs> Jesus, I, I can't think of any, any really because I don't, don't think Don't give me all of them. Give me the one that still hits you hard. Like, even if you see that uh, actor, uh, like in the shop, uh, you're like, <laughs> 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 
No, I can't lie, really. I don't have any, any particular movie. It didn't really mean anything to me. It was uh. just, look, you didn't get the part because you were not suitable for the part. You mm. know? Yeah, Because I knew that um, I was not the kind of person to want to claim every part that, look, okay. I can do for any part or any movie, you know. I knew that, you know, I also have limitations like other people. So, so it almost, like, strikes me like, you know, being you is like second nature, like be yeah. it radio, TV, yeah. voiceovers, whatever. Yeah. Is there, because I remember speaking to, 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 an, to, an, to an actor and they were like, you know, before they get into a role, they figure right. out how's my character going to walk. Right. Actually, it's like from, yeah. from, 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 right. from your show, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, you know, I had to figure out like what walk am I going to give him? So, yeah. you know, yeah. before we started shooting, I was out there figuring the walk and I was like, yeah, there's a lot of things yeah. that go into this acting thing. Are you like that? Are you out there the night before figuring out how is he going to laugh? You know, no. how is he going to eat? No. What I do is, when I start, uh. I just go for it and make a mark. And the standard that I've created there, mm. I just have to keep up to it, you know, and be consistent. You uh. see, that's the only thing. But I never know how I'm going to walk. But if I feel, gee, this part makes me walk this way, then I have to continue walking that way throughout the movie. That's the thing. Uh. Yeah. And uh, what's your, uh, your feedback? process like to, to yourself yeah. do you watch it over and over and then like okay that's the pleasure you should do this next time you'll get better at this mm -hmm. or do you let other people give you feedback okay. you know where are you taking your your crit from yeah I let I let, I let other people give me feedback and if they say ah you nailed it hey you killed it yeah you know? then I know okay I seem to be doing the right thing so I must just keep to what I was doing you mm. see what I mean? yeah that's how I, I measure myself so in radio they teach us you never as good as they say you are but no. also you never as bad as they say you that's are that's right yeah. <laughs> all right did you were you guys also taught this yeah we taught that uh, radio is a theater of the mind it's just like television yeah. is waiting you know those hurry up and wait hurry up and wait <laughs> yeah. hurry up hurry up hurry up yeah. and then just wait that's television. Radio, it's the theater of the mind. You have to make the listener, you know, take your listener away, make uh. him imagine, see this larger than life figure that is in mm. front of them or in their ear. You see what I mean? So, yeah. what's the, the most crippling bit, bit of feedback you've ever received about yourself? Like, because people can be mean, hey? Yeah, people, people can, can be, be mean. Better and, better and like, okay, 1970, there wasn't yeah. Twitter where they like can tell you immediately. They have to like yeah. write a message, yeah. put it in a bottle, yeah. send, it with, yeah. <laughs> send it with the water, right. maybe send a message with a bird, whatever. Right. But I mean, it would get to you. What, right. what, what have you ever been told that was not nice about yourself? About me. News reading. I don't know. My voice was just not good for, for news. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I think uh, I have a very, I don't know. A voice Distracting? To, maybe I don't have a voice that demands or commands you to do something, you know, or I don't have a, a very opinionated kind of voice. Okay. I just, I'm too laid back to deliver news, you see. And how do, how do you not take that to heart? Uh, when someone is saying negative about who you are? Uh, well, I didn't take it to heart because I wasn't interested in news, in news reading anyway. Why were you doing it? Mm -hmm. Why were you doing it for the money? No, no, no. I was just filling up. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, he is like the most laid-back person I've ever met. Like everything is just happening to him. He's like, okay, what are we doing that? All right, which way is the wind going? Let's go there. After this quick break, more acting nostalgia and our conversation will delve into spirituality, which I am very big on. A real talk is back in a moment. <laughs> Oh, 
I think Samele see discussing at the Hello, Rob Treasure. How are you? It's Zinzi, little Nomzamo, not little anymore. Uh, just wanted to say hi to you and just to say that working with you was one of the greatest experiences of my life. You are a complete gentleman and also just a very surprising man. I think going into it, I thought I'd be so intimidated by you. Obviously, the legend himself. But you were just so incredible, so much fun. That's what people don't know. You're so funny. So much fun, so much advice, so much laughter. So many unexpected moments with you. Uh, definitely one of the highlights of my career. Hopefully, once again in my life, I'd be able to work with you. But until then, just wanted to say, yeah, thank you. Welcome back. That was a clip of Nom Zamo and a special message from Zinzi Zungu who only remembers Bob Treasure with the most utmost love and respect through the training to appease the ancestors. We're going to find out more about that later. She says you're funny. Is that true? Yeah, maybe I have a bit of a uh, sense of humor, yes. It's difficult to tell you uh, to answer that, like, yeah, I'm funny. Yo, like, yo, you, you I really can't say you're funny. Other people must <laughs> say it's like, yo. it's like, it's like, you know, when people are like, oh, what's your strong point? Mm. I'm humble. You're like, no, we'll tell you you're yo, humble. You, it, you can't yeah. tell that. <laughs> what do you remember the most about working on that production? Uh, Namzamo. Yeah. Oh, gee, it was, so, it was such a nice production, actually. I remember Namzamo. We're given free flow, you know, you... Mm. You didn't even have to stick to the script, you know. You wow. just had to make it happen, be yeah. funny, and, and make it happen. But sticking to whatever theme was there, yeah. So it was really like second nature. Yeah. It was, it was so. Was it important for you to do a show that had, you know, that depicted a, a positive spin on, you know, a black family? Like there's a mother, she's a single mother, all of that. Was it important for you to be the person relaying that narrative to the country? Yeah, it was very, very important to 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 sort of reflect that a household run or partly run by a man only without a wife you yeah. know, can actually work out because this man runs this family with a background that he had a wife before there. You mm. understand? I mean, yeah, and uh, he's still keeping to the thing, you know, in his own, you know. Because you know. there's this notion that men can't raise kids, like yeah, there must always yeah. be a woman around. You know? But if you've been with a woman who has raised kids in front of you, you catch, you know, you pick up little things here and there. You yeah. know? You go, oh, this is how she does it. So if she's not in, I can change the nappy this way, I can okay. do whatever you are, you see. So, so yeah. the tweets are coming in fast mm -hmm. and heavy. Uh, Rele underscore Sparkle says, Treasure Shabalala is a pioneer of broadcasting and he oozes the beauty of radio for me. Thank you very much. Uh, Vusi Mao says, a treasure indeed. I see what you did there. Uh, will he be returning to Generations Legacy as it is rumored? <sighs> I don't know. I haven't, been, I haven't been told about it. Even if I go there, maybe it'll just be for a while. Eh? Yeah. So no one's called? No mm. one's sent an SMS, nothing? Well, I've had my agent saying something about it, but... Uh, I'm still waiting. I'm still oh, waiting. okay. Yeah. Well, well, you know, let, let's leave it there. You, you'll let us know when it's happening. And then Robert Tapu says, uh, TT, what do you think of the mushrooming of internet radio versus original radio and the quality of radio in South Africa in general? Yo, class is in session. Huh. What a question, eh? Internet radio has arrived. We can't deny that. Mm -hmm. But as, of, as for the quality, as compared to traditional radio yeah well maybe someone more professional can answer that one uh. mm, but uh, I don't know there seems to be a difference somewhere you know uh. radio is not obviously what it used to be before uh. but what it is now is acceptable it's just mm. like what was there before is acceptable as well you see it's just that whether it's an improvement or a degeneration yeah. that's another story altogether but I mean along the line of being in radio what what came up? Because, I mean, for instance, now mm. it's internet radio and then, mm. you know, normal radio is like, ooh, internet mm. radio, you know, we need to fight that. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, along the line of being in radio for 40 years, Yo. what has come up that you thought was a threat and then it obviously didn't turn out to be a threat because here you are 40 years later. Right, hey, right. But obviously things came up, like changes came up and mm -hmm. technologies came up. Yo. What came up and you thought you, and you guys thought to yourself, oh, well, here's a threat? 
uh, when, uh, like using computers instead of turntables eh, in ah. the studio. That was a big challenge because we enjoyed the turntables, the way they looked, the way you could spin them, the way you the could. control. Uh, yeah, you know, you had total control. You yeah. could do whatever manually with your hands. Now it's just buttons, 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 that, that. And, and we are so, we used to segue, you know, from one thing to another. Mm. You know. Now you can even have dead air in between, you see. Mm. You go, hey, that button won't go, won't go, <laughs> won't, there it goes, you know, that kind of thing. I see what um, you're saying. You understand what I mean? There's a disjointment of things, eh? So when, when you are you, there's a, there's a lot of forward motion where you're constantly moving forward to learn the next thing, to learn the next thing, to learn That's the next thing, yeah. to obviously stay relevant. Mm. But let's stop. Let's just stop and think about it. Mm. What can this forward momentum that we're constantly on when it comes to broadcasting, mm -hmm. what can we backstroke on? What, what, what can our generation of broadcasters mm. right. learn from your generation of broadcasters? Right. You Don't can, be humble. No, no, no. You can learn a lot from us. Come through. You know. We, 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 we beautified the whole thing. You know, if you come up with a product, we, you would have a complete product here. But the product would be so nicely shaped and, you know, every corner in its place, every straight line in its place. But at the same time, it was flowing. It was like music. It was something that you could enjoy. Yeah. You, you understand what I mean? It, it was not about, you know, say, about... It's information, you have to push it across. We had a way of like, you know, doing <laughs> it in, in such a way that you love the information. <laughs> you know, sort of. And that's yeah. what we should be learning from you. Yeah, now that you're so advanced, you know, technologically, yeah. if you can just bring in that smooth factor, mm. you know, and make it pliable, make it, you know, play with it. <laughs> you understand, I think that would be perfect. It would even be better than our times. So do you listen to any radio? I know you're on Hot 91, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. with Sasha Martiningo right. and Kevin Savage. Right. And yeah. It's like a lineup of legends. I don't know how they got that right. Yeah, yeah. But are you, are you aware of any other radio? Do you listen? Yeah, I listen. I listen to 702 yeah. at times. Yeah, I listen to Radio 2000, listen to NSP Lane. Yeah. 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 I, I listen to quite a number of radio stations. I even listen to Josie for that matter. You know? Okay, yeah, true. Yeah. And b do you listen to yourself? No, I don't. Why? This is the thing about entertainers. Entertainers never want to listen to themselves and they never it's want weird. to watch themselves. It's weird. It's weird, you know. Really, I don't know why. I, I don't even watch myself most of the time. Why? Huh? Why? It's good to hear from other people, you know, saying, oh, you were good in that, you know. Yeah. And then you say, oh, I wish I had watched it, you know, to see what they meant about good. Because you never really feel good about what you've done, really. Mm. You, you always feel... I could have done much better there, you know. But do you have your archives? Are you collecting your stuff to leave, you know, to your children and your children's children and everyone so that in a hundred years yeah. your great granddaughter can brag at school by guys? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, my mom's very good at that, yeah. Is collecting it? my old archives and making an archive kind of thing for me, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, well, after the break, we are going to talk about the spirituality and then find out what's in store in 2018. What can we look out for from Above Treasure? Stay with us one last time. Go for it. So from now until February 2018, what's said to be the year's biggest rom-com will be the talk of the town. Zulu Wedding is the film, and Bob Treasure plays Uncle Kekias, once a ferocious boxer. Now he's in three quarters blind, and he composes poetry, which he dictates to his surviving daughter, Nobuntu. Take a look at this. The Zulus are coming. I'm taking her home. Thought I was gonna let my boy go off to the Jungle Book land by himself. Jungle Book land. Motherland, baby. We're in the motherland. Yo, this is better than Zabunda. For real. Yo, go girl. Why you so stingy if you got all this money? You should tip more. You should got a mansion and a goat. I got dibs on the big one. You wanna take a selfie? How many wives do Zulu men get?
Listen, it's, it's absolutely star-studded. I'm sure you saw Tira there. Kelly Kumalo was here the other day. She was also in it, and Bob Treasure was also in it. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it must have been wonderful to also work with Dineo. I mean, she's a female film, filmmaker, yeah. and that just shows you the strides that the industry is making, Definitely, right? Yeah, yeah. So can you tell us of that experience a little bit? Yeah, it was, it was a beautiful setting, and uh, I worked with quite a number of young stars, quite a lot, and uh, Dineo was, yeah. you know, Dino Sikulana, Yeah, Dino Sikulana. She was perfect. She Look, it looks pristine. I can't wait for it to be released yeah. in Feb. And it's, it's full of stars, man, as it is. Yeah, they, they're very beautiful people there that I worked with. And, and, you know, people just respect me even on set. So I'm always is that, humbled. I, is that tough for you, the fact that you, it's like you walk into a place and it's like, oh, like it's this legend thing and, That's right, is, yeah. and people are constantly wanting to learn from you teach us show That's us your it, ways yeah. Yeah. you know is, is that does that get tough sometimes yeah it does get tough because you they say it teaches something and you are also learning at the, you know, at the same time you see what i mean you want to say, hey, no, I want to learn from you guys. And they say, teach us. You have, know, that's the lesson, to never stop learning, regardless see, of how yeah, long you've that's done right, something. Yeah, you have to keep on learning, learn new things every day. Mm. You know, because as you teach, you learn as well, you see. You even learn from what you say. Mm. You see. Uh, let's, before we say goodbye, let's talk about, you said earlier, Wamba Nez Nyanya, when your spirituality is very big with you. That's and, right, yeah. and you're also a traditional healer. Not really. I'm just someone who has gone through that call. Oh. Because it was a specific call, yeah, for me to just fix myself up. Sort of. It's how to go through that call. Yeah. <laughs> so, what was? Uh, yeah, what was. Okay. But so not to be a traditional healer. So what was yeah. so that you can go through that passage uh, that's right, and yeah. align yourself the with your passage, ancestors? Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. can you share with us, like, what? made you to trust her because I just feel like it comes in different forms with people and yeah, people don't want to talk yeah, about it. Yeah. And it's almost like this, uh, you know, taboo thing. Like, for instance, uh, my sister, what her, and, yeah. you know, we speak about it freely in the household yeah, yeah. and, you know, we, we're very big on our ancestors, yeah, yeah. and that's who we are. That's right, yeah. But, like, I find, like, people want to be taboo and they don't want to talk about it. So mm. what was your journey to going through the process? Yeah, my journey was actually to put the family, the whole family or the clan in order because... You know, uh, born in Soweto and uh, bred there. Where's your lineage? Yeah, where's, you where see, you, your lineage, yeah. your genealogy, everything, all that put together. It's just to reconstruct the family and, you know, have it there and say, right, oh, this is how it went. And this went there and this went there. So, yeah, that was all. Because we were completely blank, you know, when we grew up. We uh, never knew anything about those things. In fact, most of the things. Ugiawame Transkai was actually an eye opener, you know. When you that worked there for Capital yeah, Radio. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, can the people live this way, that kind of thing. You see. And then after that, it came this thing with, hey, you have to do this. You yeah. see. Otherwise, it's like being in tertiary without having gone through primary. I, I hear it. And you know, you, you just made a very valid point is that you, you, people grow up in, say, Soweto or yeah. Maopane or Sushanguvo mm, mm, or Kailicha, mm, mm, you know. Uh, or as we did in PE, yeah, and yeah. they never go to the rural areas. That's right. And yeah. and and when you go there, you you a realize here's our land. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. b like there's certain rituals that you mm. went to town, you went, mm. you moved to the suburbs, and you thought that they weren't important. That's right, so how yeah. are you keeping that alive now? Is there something that you do monthly, yearly? You as a family? No, I do it every day. You know, like talk to ancestors. Mm. in the way that they taught me how to and yeah and you know like you know live with them i lost my, my father quite recently i still had a mother and a father mm. and uh, live like he's there you know because he's like now in, your ancestor yeah you, you understand what i mean yeah and he's now your voice yeah so when you go to sleep you're able to converse with them you see what i mean and uh. and and what's your your process he has tutor and then you just speak to them yeah, you go in Samoako and you talk, you know, in your private space. And in your private space. Yeah. And this is why you still get the jobs. I suppose so. I suppose that's why I still get the jobs, <laughs> despite have you my age. Have you tried playing the lottery? Maybe your ancestors can come <laughs> through there as well. I've been through even that. I mean, I once won quite a, a lot of money, actually. In Lotto? No, it was at a casino. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your ancestors aren't here to play then. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> they are not sleeping. 
Okay, just between me and you, which one was it? Blackjack? <laughs> no, it was the old... Uh, the normal it? is not... It was, I think it was called Millennium, actually, uh, yeah. yeah. 50 cents, yeah. Oh. Okay. And I scooped quite a bit, yeah. All right. <laughs> Good heavens. Okay, so <laughs> let's wrap this up. In this game called Life, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, uh, you might, uh, what you just said might disagree with me because I'm like, it's not luck. Uh. But obviously it's like this man wanted a casino. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's not luck, it's hard uh. work and mm. it's, you know, it's repetition, it's mm. discipline. Mm. You know, what have, what, what have been your mantras when you're doing something? Because I get that you're like, oh, it's second nature, I just wake up and I go and do this. But yeah. ultimately yeah. there has to be a foundation, there has to be a cornerstone of who you are. Yeah. You know, what, yeah. what is your mantra to waking up every single morning and going to do what you do? Yeah, when I wake up, actually, then I go to my sacred place, talk. Not necessarily pray, just talk. Mm. Mm. Talk about what I want to do that day or what is confronting me on that day and just ask the baby with me, that's all. Okay. Mm. Mm. And, and then, then you show up. And then I show up. You don't let them do all the work. No, no, no. Yes, you talk. I show up. And then... Thank you so much for your time. So that now, that saves me from having to prepare or do whatever. You understand what I mean? I, I go there like a virgin, you see. Mm. And then everything happens thereafter. You see? Okay, so thank you for your time. Quickly, is your voice insured? Not yet. Sure, you better talk to somebody, okay? You better talk to somebody. Look, what a treat this has been after over 45 years. Listen to that. For, some of us, you don't want to do it for five years. You want to, I'm, I'm bored, I'm bored. 45 years in show business, my treasure Shabalala is not showing any sign of slowing down. Uh, there's a lot that we can learn. I hope that this past hour has been one big masterclass for you from the broadcasting legend himself. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good night. We'll see you tomorrow, five o'clock. <laughs>